Anyways, hello and welcome back. Today we'll be talking about the history of the Sioux line. And the Sioux line was one of the other overlooked rangers, at least on my part, that served the Midwest's farmers by connecting them with far-off markets. Although it still exists today, it exists as a paper railroad owned all owning all of Canadian Pacific's U.S.-based business. It started out as three separate subsidiaries that went on to merge into one, and eventually bought out the Milwaukee Road after its bankruptcy. So like our more recent picture or more recent videos, we're gonna be going over the early days of the railroad, its pasture trains, and how it's going today. This is the Sioux system map, at least pre-merger, and uh, we'll get into all oh, as I explain the history, we'll be talking about more of the history behind it. Sioux Line's history started off with the flour millers and the Twin Cities wanting another way to reach major markets beyond St. Paul. Just like with the day Chicago was becoming too congested, so the millers including two of the members of the Pillsbury family of uh, the Pillsbury Doughboy fame, chartered a railroad, they has got one chartered, that would connect the upper Midwest to Boston via Canada. This line would become known as the Minneapolis-St. Paul and Sault Ste. Marie Railroad, connecting to Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan, um, which is in the Upper Peninsula. And construction commenced in the spring of 1884 and was completed to Sault Ste. Marie by the end of 1887. At this point, it's when CP became involved, well, Canadian Pacific, not Central Pacific. And I gotta be more specific since I have to talk about uh, multiple railroads in these uh, videos. Anyways, uh, the Canadian Pacific was trying to keep the Grand Trunk Western at bay, which is, I believe, the predecessor to modern Canadian National. It wanted to make sure it built the connection to Sault Ste. Marie, and after and a year after the Sioux Line completed its line to Sault Ste. Marie, Canadian Pacific completed their branch line from Sudbury, Ontario, Canada. Got to have that in all caps with an exclamation point because the Canadians are uh, insecure about that one. And during, uh, uh, I, I, I joke, I'm sorry Canadians, I just joke about that a little bit. Uh, I got to poke fun at this somehow because I'm like doing this in panic. Anyways, <laughs> during this time the Sioux Line had built its own route to the Twin Cities. A route to present-day North Dakota and many rural branch lines pick up traffic uh, were also under construction. But as the 1880s drew to a close, the Sioux Line hit financial difficulty and CP feared they would lose them um, to the either James J. Hill of the Great Northern fame, because the Great Northern was becoming a major player in the North, well, the Northern Plains at this point, or the Vanderbilts, who were also becoming a major player on the East Coast, or potentially the Rockefellers, who were getting involved with the Milwaukee Road at this point. Since CP, uh, Canadian Pacific was too cash strapped at this time, two of its major investors raised the money and bought the Sioux Line on its own. And for further context, about seven major families owned the majority of the railroads in this country. Um, this would be the Hills of the Great Northern, the Vanderbilts of the New York Central, the Good Family who owned the Missouri Pacific, and a few other railroads um, around the Southwest. Um, the Huntington family, who was the main backers of the Southern Pacific at this point, the Rockefellers who I don't know which what East Coast Railroad they were involved in. I know they were involved in Standard Oil, but they also got involved with the Milwaukee Road. Um, I believe at this point in history, or maybe a little bit later, and then there were the Harrimans of the Union Pacific and the Reed Syndicate, which owned the Rock Island and the Chicago and Eastern Illinois. Maybe the, I think the KD too, but they might have been the might have been the goods. I don't remember um, exactly. I don't have all the notes of all the railroads at my fingertips. Anyways, on June third, eighteen eighty nine, the first train would leave Boston for the Twin Cities. And the railroad would be a hit after that. A few years later, CP started doing better financially and quickly secured the debt of the Sioux Line and the Duluth South Shore and Atlantic Railroad. The DSA primarily hauled iron ore from the upper reaches of Minnesota, and it was struggling um, at the same time. And it served a similar area as the Sioux Line, so CP viewed taking control of it as the next logical step to protect its interests in the United States. And also at this point, it started taking over the Wisconsin Central and for the sake of uh, this video being too unwieldy on my part, I'll eventually do a video about the Wisconsin Central because it is interesting in its own right, but um, get a few brief mentions here before I completely you know, move on. And since Canadian Pacific distrusted the Great Northern, um, which was this, this is um, 1889, so this is about four years before they finished their line to uh, Seattle, they decided to secure their own traffic to Vancouver. And Canadian Pacific solution to this was um, to build an extension from Coral, North Dakota, uh, to the border with Canada, and CP eventually had their own line from Moose Jaw built south, which is Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan, 
to enable traffic to flow to Vancouver over its own lines instead of potentially losing all that traffic to Great Northern once it finished its line to Seattle. Because I think that at this point it was somewhere, if I'm looking at the map correctly, uh, somewhere in Montana, which is, uh, you know, I'm not sure where in Montana. I think it was Grand Great Falls is where they were building to, and they eventually built further west from there. Anyways, different, different video, different subject. Also, at this time, they built an extension to, no uh, to Noyes, Minnesota, or it might be Noyes, I'm not really sure, um, to connect to Winnipeg. They also built their own connection to Chicago via uh, Menasha and Fond du Lac, Wisconsin, and they also built from their branches to uh, Milwaukee and Manitowoc, Wisconsin, which is also, I believe, part of the Wisconsin Central. I'm not really sure about that. Um, Considering the history of these three railroads is very incestuous, and I eventually will make my own video on the, with the Wisconsin Central, but we'll not. We'll worry about them later. Here's a steam locomotive of the Sioux Line. Nice, pretty, black and white. Um, anyways, moving on. So let's talk about the passenger trains along the Sioux Line. So the Sioux Line was a lot like the Chicago Great Western when it came to its passenger trains. It wasn't the largest and fanciest railroad in the region, and it largely ran mixed trains and unnamed locals. Uh, some of the mixed trains, at least later in its history, would um, only run in one direction, so you were kind of screwed if you used them. Again, they were there more as an obligation and less as a um, you know, viable form of transportation towards the end. They had three main trains in their system, though. They had the Laker from Minneapolis to Duluth and Ashland, Wisconsin. The Sioux Dominion, which ran from Chicago to Vancouver via Winnipeg. And I believe at various points this only ran during the summer, or at least the connection was only there in the summer. And uh, the Dominion was the secondary train to the Canadian Pacific's flagship Canadian. And if they called it something else before they called it the Canadian, I'm not sure. Not looked into that um, railroad's history too distinctly, and I don't know if I'll ever make a video about Canada, so we'll um, pin in that for later. And the final train was the Winnipegger, which connected St. Paul with Winnipeg. And from what I can tell, they remained a largely heavyweight operation until faster trains were largely eliminated in the late 60s. And as you can see here, this is a... Um, not sure which train, but it is one of them, and then again, and there is not a single, um, except for maybe this one um, car here in the middle that might be the only streamlined car in the fleet, or in this consist. Um, also, another note to make is that the uh, Sioux Dominion did run through Moose Jaw um, for most of its history, and during its last few years, the cars were carried over the Winnipeg or to Winnipeg, and so the um, last of these trains were finally canceled. And the main reason that passenger trains um, largely weren't successful is down to there being uh, honestly too much competition and them running relatively large, uh, relatively rural and indirect routes compared to some of their other comp competitors because they are primarily meant to get stuff into Canada and less between parts of the Midwest. And um, they honestly, you know, on their main line, they didn't even serve Milwaukee directly. It was a branch line. And um, Sioux St. Marie, quite frankly, isn't a thriving metropolis. So the Twin Cities pretty much was its largest urban area that it served directly and was the core of its system. And um, most of its passenger trains were gone by 1965. It ran a joint train to um, was it the Copper Country Limited with the Milwaukee Road until 1968. Can get over to the other pavery, as you can see again, heavyweight equipment, heavyweight equipment, potentially streamlined, um, being hauled by just a random Jeep at this point, because again, not a Passenger service wasn't really their big deal. I think this is the Twin Cities. I might be wrong about that. I'm not really sure. I don't know my Midwestern um, geography based just solely on pictures um, that well. Don't live in the Midwest. Hopefully never will. I mean, it's cold and I don't like the cold. <laughs> Anyways, um, just a Sioux Jeep towards the end of its existence. And we'll get into that. So the Sioux um, lines, despite serving largely rural areas, still managed to be a strong railroad throughout its history. The only bankruptcy that it suffered was during the Great Depression, when basically every railroad went through some sort of financial trouble or bankruptcy. It, would, it entered bankruptcy in 1938 and left it in 1944. Its sister, Wisconsin Central, um, entered bankruptcy in 1933 and remained there for 21 years, which is officially the longest bankruptcy in railroad history, at least in the United States. Following the war, the Sioux Line um, was relatively prosperous. They laid new, heavier gauge track, um, installed centralized traffic control, and very rapidly dieselized. Between the end of the war in 1961, the Sioux Line and its uh, and the other Canadian Pacific Sioux City subsidiaries in the United States more or less hit a period of stasis. And in 1960, Canadian Pacific started the process of merging its U.S. based holdings into one company. 
1961, the merger was finalized in the original Sioux Line, the Wisconsin Central, and the Duluth South Shore and Atlantic merged into the modern Sioux Line that would remain a subsidiary of Canadian Pacific until 1990. Anyways, the mid-1980s would bring one last restructuring to the railroad, and I'm not entirely sure how to describe it other than they were restructuring how the holding companies worked. Um, the purchase, they also purchased the nearly defunct Milwaukee Road at this point and started selling off some of the now redundant parts of the Wisconsin Central. And on the map here, you can actually see this is the old Milwaukee Road. So to read this key, the dark red lines are the lines that uh, CP kept, and the purple lines are the lines that they sold off to other railroads or or uh, to short lines, primarily short lines, I think, um, if I'm remembering my Milwaukee Road history correctly. And then the dashed red lines are the parts that all got abandoned. And as you can see, like, yeah, the main core, uh, main line of the route um, of the Milwaukee Road is what the uh, Canadian Pacific kept. Uh, the parts of the Wisconsin Central that they slowly um, sold off were transferred to the Lake States Transportation Division, which they uh, turned into a company and divested in 1986. The new Wisconsin Central was eventually bought by Canadian National in 2001. And the final act of this was in 1990, Canadian Pacific owned about 56% of the Sioux line and it bought out the rest of the company. And in the early 2000s, they started a slow program of integrating the Sioux line into, into Canadian Pacific proper. And this is the state that exists in now, which is a paper railroad with Canadian Pacific trains running over the old Sioux lines and Milwaukee Road between the um, upper Midwest and Chicago and Canada. As for existing passenger service, the Hiawatha currently runs over the ex Milwaukee Road. And as for expanding services, I believe. Um, a lot of Amtrak expand, expansion routes in the upper Midwest are on um, the Milwaukee Road or Chicago Northwestern trackage. And the only place I could see them in theory using old Sioux Line is between Milwaukee and Appleton on the um, way to Green Bay and potentially between St. Paul and Duluth if that doesn't um, get scuttled by Republicans in the Minnesota State Legislature. Next video, I'm going to be, the one I'm going to be talking about that a little bit more. So uh, stay tuned for that one because uh, that, that's, that's hit a snag at least recently, at least last year or so. Anyways, again, there is a Discord. Please go check out the Discord if you want to talk to me there more directly. It's the only social media I use for this channel. Um, yeah, I'm also just like rapid firing like a bunch of videos while I'm off work for Christmas. So yeah, again, might, not, might be a gap in videos in the spring. So we'll see. I have no idea what will happen. I work for a school, so I get time off at, um, well, school breaks. Anyways, hope you did enjoy. Sorry about the dig at Canada. Canada, I love you. I'm going to be visiting you this coming year, so. <laughs> Hopefully it'll be fun. Anyways, I will see you in the next one. Join the Discord. Follow me on the Discord. Hopefully I've linked it down below. Anyways, I will see you in the next one.